In today's video, I will teach you everything that you need to know about exporting the highest quality video in Premiere Pro. And as a bonus, I will also share a secret tip for YouTube uploads that very, very few people know about. So let's get started. After finishing an edit, the first step should always be to define the render area by setting in and out points. So to set the in point, position your cursor at the desired starting point and press I. Then move the cursor to the end point and press O to set the out point. Once that's done, click here to access the export settings and ensure that the range setting is set to source in to out. Now we can give our render file a name as well as choose an export destination. Let's leave preset options as it is for now as we'll customize the settings anyways. As for format type, while there are newer formats out there, H.264 still remains a top choice for its balance between compatibility and quality. It just simply works and looks really great in my opinion. Then under the video tab, ensure that the resolution and frames per second match your sequence settings. If it does not, simply click the match source button to align them. And here's a secret tip. If you're creating 1080p videos for YouTube, consider upscaling that to 1440p when exporting. YouTube's algorithm handles videos at 1440p and above differently, using a separate codec that uses higher bit rates, resulting in less compression and noticeable quality improvement. As for field order and aspect, make sure to leave them on the default setting of progressive and square pixels. We don't need to worry about these. Then if we expand, we will see some more options. Render at maximum depth should only be enabled if you're working with 10-bit footage, gradients prone to bending or effects that operate in 32-bit color space. Otherwise, it will unnecessarily increase render time. Similarly, use maximum render quality is only beneficial when upscaling or downscaling video or when making other changes that require image resampling, like changing aspect ratios or applying certain effects. So if you're scaling from 1080p to 1440p as mentioned editor, then make sure to enable it. Otherwise, it will only increase render time as well. For performance, choose hardware encoding whenever possible, as it utilizes your GPU instead of CPU for rendering, which is usually much faster. Then make sure the profile is set to high or high 10 if you're using 10-bit colors. But if you don't know what that means, just leave it on high. As for level, it depends on your resolution and frame rate. I'll leave a general explanation on screen, but for me, 5.1 is the right choice. When it comes to bitrate settings, CBR or constant bitrate maintains a consistent bitrate throughout the video. While this might seem straightforward, I've found that VBR or variable bitrate can often be more efficient. VBR intelligently allocates more data to complex parts of the video, resulting in better overall quality and potentially smaller file sizes. I recommend VBR one pass for a good balance between quality and export time. However, if you have time, VBR 2Pass might offer slightly better quality, although it does take much longer to render. Now, for the bitrate amount, it depends on your video resolution and frame rate. Um, I'll display YouTube's recommended numbers on screen as they're pretty good. However, I usually increase them slightly, especially for action-heavy videos like gaming content. If you choose VBR 2Pass, remember to increase the maximum bitrate to roughly twice the target bitrate for optimal results. For audio, the default settings should suffice unless you have specific requirements, so feel free to copy my settings if they differ from yours. To save the presets, click here, give them a name, and you will not have to repeat this process ever again. Now, you could simply export and be done with it, but for long-term efficiency, I recommend sending it to Media Encoder for faster rendering and more options like pausing exports or continuing to work in Premiere while it's rendering. And that's about it. I hope you learned something. And if you would like to take your Premiere Pro edits to the next level, consider checking out my new Essential Presets Pack. Thank you and see you soon.